hosting eighth ranked Alabama on CBS. The Crimson Tide looking for their sixth win in seven games to cap off the regular season. But the Bulldogs came out firing. Severe Wheeler drives puts home the tough reverse layup. Next possession, ball swung around to Katie Johnson, draining the open tray. Georgia coming out hot, and they kept it that way. A few minutes later, Wheeler drives, dishes it to Tumani Kamar for the two-handed slam. Next Georgia possession, Justin Kyer feeds Jackson Etter for the open three in transition. The Bulldogs led by as many as 14 in the first half, but then the Alabama offense responds in a big way. Final minute of the first half, Joshua Primo, he feeds John Petty Jr. for the layup inside. Alabama down six, but that caps off a quick 6-0 run to end the half. Now early second, Primo uses the Euro step, lays it in. Next, Bama possession. Herbert Jones kicks it out to Jordan Bruner for the open three. And Alabama now up one, their first lead since five minutes into the first half. And later, Jones drives, dishes it to Petty Jr. for the deep three, even with the hand in his face. That caps a 21 2 run for Bama going back to the end of the first half. But Georgia's still in it. Wheeler with the full court pass to Johnson for the layup in transition. Bulldogs down four. Now 50 seconds left. Jordan Shackleford drives. Kiss it to Keon Ellis for the clutch three. Alabama finishes the season 16 and two in the conference, winning their first regular season SEC title since 02. Your final 89-79. Bama covers the seven point spread while the over 160 hits. Kenny White and Chip Patterson told you to take the over. And as we are in March, getting ready for March Madness, check out Alabama's tournament resume. Jerry Palm currently projecting them a two seed for all the madness. Matt Norlander, co-host of the Eye on College Basketball podcast and college basketball writer Chip Patterson here with us. This is the type of finish we expected from an eighth ranked team in the country and the best in the SEC. Did we not, Matt? Yeah, nice second half showing here. Javon Quinley scored all of his points after the break and in doing so reminded us that Alabama is certainly capable of doing some uh, some interesting things to some teams after the break. Nate Oates is a very, very good uh, X and O's coach and, you know, it's been proven at Buffalo. That's how he got the Alabama job. And now he has the Crimson Tide uh, on pace to, to have really one of his best seasons ever. Now, right now, Jerry Palm's got Alabama on the two line. That's accurate. Uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see what else is going to happen around college basketball this weekend and then with conference tournaments. Alabama has never been a one seed in its history. Its highest is a two seed. That probably is going to be where the tide winds up finishing. But if Alabama were to win the SEC tournament and then got some help with, you know, the Big Ten teams kind of knocking each other off, maybe it could make school history. But with what Bama was able to do in the second half uh, to really just change its offensive approach, be much more successful, get over on Georgia, maintain the lead, keep them at arm's length for the rest of the way there. I know this is a win that Oates and that staff are going to cherish because it came on the road and really is it's a definitive stamp heading into the SEC tournament. This is the team to beat in that league tournament. And I think that any team, if they want any chance of beating Alabama, they're going to have to try and learn how to play their way. And that's much, much easier said than done. Uh, trigger warning for any Georgia fans that are watching us right now, but isn't this where we make the joke that it looked like they put into a at halftime? Isn't this where we go back and we bring back all those national championship game feelings from a few years ago? It, it was really simple to me. I mean, they came out, they hit five of their first six three-pointers. On seven of their first ten possessions after halftime, Alabama scored. I thought that this in the big picture when looking at Alabama was a, a great sign of Alabama's depth and to get – now, all of that great second half production out of Javon Quinterly, I mean, that's that's why you're excited to be able to get somebody. Remember, he started his career at Villanova, had to sit out for a season, and now he's become uh, maybe a little bit of an X factor as we start to look into the postseason. There were a lot of players that I thought, the bench players who gave some really good minutes to the Crimson Tide in this game as they were really searching, looking for answers, couldn't get anything going in the first half. So uh, I think Alabama's depth was on full display. Uh, the great halftime adjustments, as Matt mentioned earlier. And then, you know, there's a little bit of inevitability with the way that Alabama plays, with the kind of rhythm, and especially when they get hot from three, 
you just don't think that they're going to be cold for an entire 40 minutes. And I think we saw that at the beginning of the second half with them knocking down a few three pointers, getting some confidence and, and then really squeezing Georgia with their style of play. Oh, come on, Chip. You're bringing back those football memories of blowing leads. Georgia fans shivering everywhere, but for, for both squads, next up is the conference tournament. And the way Georgia played and ultimately hung in there at least the first half with the best team in the conference, this has to be a momentum builder for the Bulldogs, is it not, Chip? I think it's going to be tough to keep this high. I mean, you've got Alabama coming into your house. Uh, you come out with all that energy. Great play from Wheeler. I mean, everybody on that Bulldogs roster was was playing with confidence. They were dialed in. I think it's going to be a real challenge for Tom Crean to be able to get the, this Georgia team back up to that level. Now, what's one thing we've been talking about it here on CBS Sports HQ for weeks? And when it comes to us from a wagering angle or anything like that, we're always talking about Georgia's pace and I do think that if they bring that up tempo style into the SEC tournament maybe they catch somebody sleeping but I think it's going to be a tremendous challenge for Tom Green to be able to get Georgia to avoid a letdown in a season where the NCAA tournament hopes are obviously out of the question. Well, we mentioned it. Our Jerry Palm currently projects Bama as a two seed for March Madness. It is called Madness for a reason. It's going to be a toss up to see what happens. But Matt, you already mentioned that you think Bama's on pace for their best season. Is their ceiling that two seed and getting the right pairings to see if they can make it all the way to be the team cutting down the nets? Well, if you're asking if Alabama has the capability of winning a national championship in 2021, my answer is yes. It would not rank as my one, two, three, or four team in terms of, you know, most likely to do it, but certainly, you know, sixth or seventh most likely. I don't have the odds, uh, you know, the latest odds out of William Hill in terms of, you know, national championship futures, but Alabama has a shot because of the way it plays. Again, it's different than any other team at the power conference level. Alabama treats mid-range shots like poison. Nate Oates does not want them. He wants either three-point attempts or shots at the rim because those are the most efficient shots overall. It's kind of a basic formula and something that's been popularized to a certain extent in the NBA, particularly in a kind of a hyper way in the past three, four seasons. At the college level, everyone else but Nate Oates in Alabama, particularly at the power conference level, is behind. So because Alabama plays this way, plays fast, top five defense in America, isn't afraid to shoot, has at least five players that Oates has confidence in shooting multiple three, four, five times a game from beyond the arc. That's why Alabama's ceiling is a national championship. Not that it's likely to do it. It's not even necessarily likely to get to a final four. If, it, if, if Alabama is the two in, in, in Baylor's bracket, then that's going to be a very tough ask. Alabama could do it, but I would take Baylor straight up on a neutral court against the Crimson Tide. But you get a two seed, you make the Elite Eight, you see what Nate Oates has done. Yes, you're going to have a case, I expect, in about three weeks from now where Alabama is going to have arguably its best season in program history. So I've been thinking about who might benefit from this unique NCAA tournament where we're not going to be uh, traveling all across the country and the teams that make the deepest run will essentially be uh, rocket, racking up those hotel reward points uh, for an extended stay in the Hoosier State. And I, I think it's Alabama because the Alabama national championship pitch is that they get hot and that they go on a run and that a team that shoots about shoots a lot of three pointers, uh, as Matt mentioned, but shoots about 35, 36 percent from behind the arc that maybe they shoot 38 percent for the entire tournament, six straight wins. Uh, you know, maybe they are able to really uh, take a team and wear it down with that pace, with that intense defense. And you think about the rhythm that it takes to to uh, be able to keep that going. I think that rhythm gets disrupted with a lot of travel, with a lot of trips back to campus. And I think that maybe with this year's unique NCAA tournament, uh, a dream month where Alabama catches fire, they are a team that I could absolutely see taking advantage of that. Nate Oates found the recipe for success in the regular season. Can that translate to March? Chip and Matt, we appreciate your insight. Thank you so much. And to get more from Matt and our Gary Parish, make sure to download and subscribe to the Eye on College Basketball podcast. All the storylines, all you need to know as we get ready for March Madness. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.